That's a wonderful question because you've asked something about which we, we haven't talked the whole time we've been here, but it's been on the agenda for a long time. When, when the uh, earthquake took place in Kashmir in 2007, I think, what, what year, what, what, the same year as Katrina and 2005 and the tsunami all happened in the same year. Um, the, the, one of the great concerns in the, the um, international community regarding that earthquake was that the winter was coming in Kashmir and Kashmir's up there, you know, it's a cold place uh, in the winter and uh, there simply weren't enough tents in the warehouses or the factories to meet the need. Uh, they needed some uh, 500,000 uh, winterized tents, they thought, and only two to 300,000 uh, tents were available because they were already being used for these other disasters that had preceded them. Uh, ironically, Pakistan is where most of those tents are manufactured on the planet, but nevertheless, there were none available or, few, or not enough available. So, um, although I didn't have the answer at the time, and we're too young to, to have been able to solve this, it immediately struck me that there are lots of tents on the planet uh, and, and, and other, other uh, 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 tools or materials, blankets, etc., in people's garages, in their attics, etc., etc. The question is, how do you get them from where they are to where they need to be? When I was growing up in Britain, uh, one of the things that happened is, is uh, every year there's, there's something called Rag Week. And that's when the students get dressed up in, uh, like clowns and the like, and they, like locusts, raid the community for money raising money for charity. They will stop your car and until you fork up the money, you don't get to move your car and, and so on and so forth. You're accosted on the street and, and so on. It was a marvelous way to raise money and they still do it. Although they've got restrictions on how many times they can shake the can now because it's intrusive. It's interesting, but another story. Uh, anyway, um, it occurred to me that students uh, are, are the kinds of people who are willing to get off their backsides and go knock on people's doors for a good cause. And imagine if we had a, a network already established that was a turnkey operation. So a disaster occurs, an emergency arises, and we push the button. And in this electronic information age, people get mobilized on campuses all over the country, all over the world for that matter, uh, um, to go knocking on doors whether it's money, blankets, or food, whatever it is, to meet this need and consolidate what they collect, send it to the Red Cross or whoever is the appropriate party and, and have it distributed uh, where it needs to be. We've, we've had that vision ever since that earthquake. Uh, we don't have yet the resources to implement that, but it's something I see as part. There may be a better way of doing it than what I describe or envision, but, but the possibility is tremendously exciting to me. Uh, so. I think there are real, real opportunities for, uh, in, in the event of, of disasters or special needs, to mobilize large numbers of people, uh, including people in the chemistry profession, to attack a problem. If there's a, a, um, a, indeed an earthquake and, and uh, um, there are spills, how do you get people there and how do you get the right kind of expertise there? Uh, we can have potentially a turnkey system that mobilizes people to do that. Sometimes uh, you don't actually need the people to be there, you need them to be online so that they can give advice. So somebody's holding the phone and the, 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 the camera or whatever and there's somebody in, in another country entirely who's an expert on how you, do, how you deal with this, how you deal with that, who can give advice right there and say, no, don't turn this, do that. Uh, as if they were defusing a bomb perhaps. Uh, so. I don't know if that, does that yes. answer the question. I, Good. I have a follow-up on that, actually. Um, we had a, a potluck or a meeting last year, and um, there was we, this question had been asked, and it was one interesting comment from uh, an attendee at the, at the conference was, well, you know, chemists can, if a chemist is there, they can typically can smell what the problem is. And so a, you, a chemist has a very good nose. They can typically identify what types of chemicals that, that might be involved. And so rather than taking a, a huge analytical lab to, to do this, sometimes people can just tell by, tell by the smell uh, what, what the, the chemicals are involved. So I thought that was an interesting comment. My, my professor in graduate school said the nose was the chemist's finest analytical instrument. 